I've made a lot of videos about disability, disability exams, and the disability application process, but this is going to be my most important video yet. If you're involved in the disability application process, I suggest you watch it. And the reason why this is the most important one yet is because I keep seeing people making the same mistake over and over and over again. I see it when I read their Form 3373, also known as Functional Report Adult, where you get to write down why you're disabled for Social Security. I see it when I ask people during disability exams to tell me about their problems that are making them disabled. And I see it in the comments to my videos. I just don't seem to have gotten this message across in the past. So this video, I'm going to be more blunt than usual. Now, I've found that there are some viewers who just can't handle the truth. So if you're a delicate soul who's easily offended, I strongly suggest that you turn off this video and watch something else. But if you're a person who's really wanting to get Social Security disability approved and you can handle the truth, then stick around. Hello, I'm John Foster. I'm a medical doctor who does Social Security disability exams. I'll have soon done 2000, and as usual, everything I say reflects my own opinions and not the opinions of the Social Security Administration or any other medical body. Now, folks, here are the plain facts. Your disability application will not be approved because you have herniated discs. Will not be approved because you've had a heart attack or have stents in your heart. Will not be approved because you have arthritis in your knees or in any other joints will not be approved because you have fibromyalgia, will not be approved because you have anxiety or depression, will not be approved because you've had a traumatic brain injury, will not be approved because you've had surgery, whether that's one operation or six operations, will not be approved because you've had cancer, except for certain cancers that I've listed in my video on conditions that are approved based on the diagnosis alone. I'll leave a link to that video in the description below. You will not be approved because the VA has found you to be 100% disabled. You will not be approved because you have pain, no matter how severe you say that pain is. And your disability application will not be approved because your personal doctor says that you can't work. In order for your disability application to be approved, you must have one, medical problems. Those problems can be physical, psychological, or some combination of physical and psychological. And those problems, too, must severely limit your ability to perform a simple entry-level job. Note, that doesn't mean you can't perform your regular job. It means that you cannot reliably perform the duties of a simple entry-level job. Think of, for example, being a ticket taker at a movie theater. You can do that job sitting down or standing up. It doesn't involve he any heavy lifting or physical exertion, doesn't require you to climb stairs, and doesn't require much interaction with the public beyond telling them where, which theater their movie's in and where the restrooms are. And three, those problems must have been present 
or expected to be present for at least 12 months. Let me make this perfectly clear. Your diagnosis does not get your disability application approved. Your work-related limitations are what get your disability application approved. And I'm going to list the work-related abilities Social Security considers important, and I'll write them down in the description to this video below. They are the ability to sit, stand, walk, lift, carry, speak, travel, understand, remember, concentrate, persist, interact socially, adapt, see, and hear. If and only if your medical problems severely limit those abilities, will Social Security approve your disability application. And next, you must submit proof of those problems and limitations. And the sorts of proof that Social Security finds acceptable are first of all Form SSA 3373 where you describe your problems and most importantly and which I see people rarely doing describe how those problems limit your ability to work. Number two, medical records and Social Security wants up-to-date medical records within the last two years and they prefer specialist records, hospital records, surgical records which your surgeon pr produces after they finished your operation, relevant test results and note that Social Security does not approve disability based on test results alone. Test results are supporting evidence, not definitive evidence of medical problems causing disability. A consultative examination, which is what I do, which is to provide an independent physical exam and report to Social Security, a psychological evaluation, which I don't do, which is a report by an independent psychologist who sees patients to evaluate their psychological problems. And finally, two sources that I almost never see but can be very helpful. And the first is what Social Security calls non-medical source evidence. And I'm going to make an a video on that in the near future. That's reports from people such as your boss, your supervisor, your social worker, your caseworker, shelter staff who are familiar with you. And finally, journals. Journals are something that you produce and they're very helpful for intermittent problems. Suppose, for example, that you get epileptic seizures fairly frequently. Social Security is going to ask, how often do you get seizures? If you don't know, that's a big problem. So for something like that, I suggest you get a little notebook and keep a record for a week or a month or so and each time you have an episode that would make you disabled, such as an epileptic seizure, write down the time and date in your notebook. I've listened to many videos from Social Security attorneys and they all agree that that sort of journal will often win an approval for one of their clients. So, for example, I said at the beginning, your application for disability will not be approved because you have herniated discs. But if you can explain how the herniated discs cause you severe back pain that severely limits your ability to lift and carry, stand and walk, then you have a good chance of having your disability application approved. 
Likewise, you won't be approved because you say you have anxiety. But if you can present evidence on how that anxiety limits your ability to interact socially, limits your ability to travel, limits your ability to concentrate and focus on the job, you stand a good chance of having your disability application approved. Please, 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 this is the important message from this video. Your diagnosis is not what gets your disability application approved. It's how your medical problems, be they physical or psychological, interfere with your ability to work. Well, I hope this has been helpful, and as always, remember, if it happens, it's possible.